In this brief video, we'll be discussing flexible flat feet in children. Historically, flat feet were considered a problem, and they were often so-called treated by odd-shaped shoes with stiff soles and arch supports. And the, t and the arch tend to develop, occur, and they got the credit to having the shoe wear. So we thought that we would check to see what the natural history of the arch was, and we studied over a thousand children at uh, different ages. And what we found was, was that the arch developed normally. These were untreated children, and it usually occurred here. This is flat feet and having an arch. And so they went to developing an arch, usually in the first few years of life. Then it usually plateaued off and continued on during adult life. And this gray area is showing the range of normal. And you see some of the adults had flat, flat feet as well. So uh, flat-footedness in adults is often uh, flexible and also often normal. We also measured the radiographic findings in these developmental feet. And we found that, that the uh, Taylor inclination, a measure of the development of the arch, also declined spontaneously and uh, it occurred whether treatment was given or not. And therefore, uh, again, confirmed that the arch develops normally and not as a result of any sort of intervention. So in general, uh, about half of children at the age of three will be flex have flexible flat feet, whereas a quarter at the age of six, and about one percent will have pathological or stiff flat feet, serious type. There are some that have persisting flat feet, and they're more likely to occur where there's a family history, where there's joint laxity, obesity, or early shoe wear. And this is shown in a study of uh, Saudi Arabia recruits, uh, military study, flat feet in 5% of their soldiers, no disability or complaints with those that are flexible. And flat feet were associated with a family history, shoes during childhood, obesity, or urban residence. Joint laxity is one would expect is associated with, with increased incidence of flat feet. And uh, this, these are measures as, that are common. Flexible flat feet uh, are about twice as common in those kids who have uh, joint laxity. Obesity, as one would expect, increases the likelihood of them being flat-footedness. And these are studies that showed a relationship with obesity and flat feet, as is early shoe wearing. And this is contrary to traditional thinking that you need stiff shoes to prevent flat feet. Actually, stiff shoes could actually increase the risk of, 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 uh, of flat feet, according to these studies. What happens if it persists into adult life? Well, a classic study, perhaps one of the best uh, foot studies ever done, was done by Harrison Beeth at the end of the Second World War, and where they found that there was no disability from flexible flat feet because recruits from the First and the Second World War were often disqualified from flat feet. But it didn't really cause any problems in the military, so they changed the attitude. But if there was stiffness, tight heel core or tarsal collision, then they had problems. And these are the pathologic or the treatment kinds, of types that needed treatment. More recently, we did this study in flat foot and adults uh, who were individuals who worked in a grocery store because they walked around so much. And again, we found no relationship between the arch configuration and pain scores, again confirming these results. Now, as we mentioned before, about 1% of children have pathologic flat feet. Pathologic flat feet are feet that are stiff, and this differentiation is made on physical examination. If they're flexible, they're flex in all directions, they're flexible, and we reassurance this would be nine. If they're stiff, there's a problem. They have tight heel cords or, or joint fusions and the like, and you need to make the diagnosis, and some of these will require surgical correction. So this differentiation is relatively easy to make, and one of the most common problems is the uh, heel cord contracture. Now, how do you manage flexible flat feet in children? Well, we give reassurance to the parents in education, and we give advice and this primarily is to avoid any sort of treatment if they're flexible because it doesn't work and it's uncomfortable. And if you need backup, you can go to our website at Global Help. 
you can click on what parents should know booklet download it and print it out if you want to and it has a section on flat feet and bow legs knock knees and in towing etc now some families feel like they have to do something and if that's the case and you're stuck you can suggest some good things for the kid generally by avoiding obesity we know that causes Increase risk of flat feet by healthy diet, limiting TV, encouraging the kid I get out and play a lot. Barefoot, being going barefoot around the house or our yard is another choice. And then again, avoiding the ineffective and harmful treatments of inserts, exercises, and the like. Because these things don't work, we don't recommend them because studies have shown, like this one in Wenger. Comparing shoe wears, non-shoe wears, no difference. The, the child has to wear them and they're uncomfortable sometimes and embarrassing and the parent has to buy them. And so it's expensive for, for families and societies without any benefit. So in summary, most infants and young children have flexible flat feet. And in mostly the arch develops during early childhood. But it might persist if the parents have flat feet or they wear shoes as in early childhood, or the child is obese or has joint laxity. But even if it persists into adult life, that's really okay too, because they don't have disability then either. And the treatment, therefore, of flexible flat foot is not only unnecessary because they don't have disability, but also harmful because it's embarrassing and costly. And in all these cases, one must rule out pathological causes of flat feet by physical examination. Thank you for watching this brief video, and please send me any comments at staley at uw.edu. And if you want more publications, you can go to our website and uh, download uh, PDF publications or videos, uh, connections, or DVD libraries. Thank you.